I guess. Built to stand the test of time. It's amazing to think that we're standing on the same planetary body where humankind first ventured into space. We've come a long way since then. Voltaire really is something else. A supercomputer so powerful, they put it on the damn moon to keep it cool. Although by that logic, they should be running it purely in the vacuum of space. But hey, good marketing material. Uh, I've been spending some off hours running some dumb simulations, just because I can. My favorite so far is simulating the sound of every duck on Earth quacking after receiving a piece of bread. You didn't know you wanted a real-time sim of feeding all the ducks, but now you have it. <laughs> Welcome, humanity. Nova Galactic Project Log, Principal Engineer Lang Shu. Voltaire's being reconfigured for this new initiative. The math we're being asked to crunch is ambitious, even for a supercomputer. We might as well be asking it to count every grain of sand in every desert on Earth. Who came up with these original equations? Our partner isn't being very open about it. Every question I have goes through some discretionary channel. I'm surprised we even know we're working on a ship. the assignment up here, we were told to bring a couple of personal items. Some psychological study said it helped when you're away from Earth this long. I brought my grandmother's old abacus. I would play with it on her lap, and she'd teach me the Russian for all the numbers. She, uh, just got word that she passed. The next shuttle isn't for three months, so I'll, uh, I won't be able to go to the funeral. <sighs> Goodbye, Babushka. Thank you for teaching me math. It brought me to the moon. state of this facility. I wonder why this place was abandoned in such haste.
was locked. that are going to travel the stars? We're literally on a base on the moon. Oh, come on, Sabina. I'm trying to share my dreams here. Well, your dreams are always out there and never here where the rest of us live. Can't you just be happy doing your job? Where's the fun in that?
ancient spin of time almost complete. Total time, 5 minutes, 22 seconds. Right on schedule. How are the helium-3 valves holding, Nova? We double-checked the leakage concerns this morning before the launch. All signs green. Any changes to the calculation sequence from Voltaire? No changes since we uploaded the last figures yesterday. It's a clean shot from here to Jupiter. One day the computer will be on board the spaceship. Just imagine that. One miracle of science at a time, Canaveral. Counting down. Five. Four. Three. Two. orbit right now. Visual confirmation will be possible in <laughs> 32 minutes. Afraid the speed of light is on the slow side these days. <laughs> How does it feel to break the laws of physics, Canaveral? We're all pretty excited down here in NASA, I won't lie. Excited enough to tell me where you got the Keep original scanning. data? I'm sure Not there's something a million nearby. years.
Unless I'm mistaken, that's why I have something I need to discuss with you. I'm here for you, my love. Forgive me for pulling you aside again, but, well, there's so much to process right now. The Emissary, the Hunter, the Unity, an entire multiverse. I can't even begin to wrap my head around it all. I don't know where to begin. The fact that we are the origin of the Starborn. Humans literally reborn by entering the Unity. The same, yet different. <sighs> it's unbelievable. I feel like most of the knowledge we've amassed in the last few centuries about the universe has just been made obsolete. Oh goodness, almost every facet of science. Astrophysics, physiology, evolutionism, grab theory, the list goes on and on. There are areas of study that will need to change, and some basic rules of science that will need to be completely blown up and reinvented. Perhaps I'm overreacting, but you can't deny there will be more than a few textbook chapters that need to be rewritten. We've been pushing further and further outwards from our home, when we should have spent more time being prepared for the consequences. Our current problem relates closely to the nature of humans as a species. This rush to curiosity has led us to enter the Unity and become Starborn. It certainly is. Without curiosity, our motivation to explore would vanish. But in this case, there's a difference between exploring the cosmos and blindly entering the unknown without being prepared for the consequences. But it has made a difference. Here we are, caught in the middle of some sort of needlessly violent crusade between the Hunter and the Emissary. You'd think that a technologically advanced society would have evolved past petty squabbling over something like the artifacts. It almost makes me wonder if entering the Unity has done them more harm than good. Oh, absolutely. Their arrival in our universe is much too timely to be for any other reason. It's also clear that the need to collect these artifacts are an obsession for them, almost bordering on an addiction. That leads me to wonder what the Unity has done to their minds and their souls. No, no, that's not it at all. When you pass into whatever lies beyond, we don't know what will become of you. Will you remember your life as you knew it? Will the hunger to collect the artifacts consume your life like it's clearly consumed the Starborn? Of course not. I am and always will be an explorer at heart. My concern is how fundamental the change will be to ourselves as people. We don't even know if you'll remember anything about this conversation. I'm worried what that will mean between us. I'm just as curious to find out what's on the other side as well, but that's not the point. As the Chair of Constellation, I want all of us to have this opportunity to explore the Unity. It would be the pinnacle exploration of our lives. However, after we enter the Unity, we'll likely evolve. You and I, as we stand here right now, will essentially cease to exist. The honest truth is that, well, <laughs> you're the love of my life, and I can't bear to lose you. I'm not sure. I'm guessing based on what we've learned. Even if I accompany you into the Unity, the question still remains. Would we know each other anymore? Even if we did, 
Would we care? Part of what I do as chair of Constellation is weigh the costs of our expeditions. And this one... Oh, the cost is extremely high. I do love you. That's why this decision is tearing me apart. Listen, I realize nothing that I say is ever going to change your mind or diminish the enticement of this incredible opportunity. All I ask is that you research the facts before you blindly stumble off into the unknown. I... I don't know if I'm ready to make that leap, but knowing we'd be doing it hand in hand would certainly make it more comforting. Well, I suppose I've ruined the moment again, haven't I? <laughs> I'm getting quite good at that lately. I'll let you get back to whatever you were doing. Just think what we discussed. I know I will.
gantry was a loading position. I wonder what prevented this particular colony ship from lifting off. or maybe fossils of microbial life. Instead, Dr. Victor Isa comes with two members of the military. Everything they've brought back is under wraps. What could a theoretical physicist need with a sample from Mars? Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. I have been trying to cozy up to Dr. Isa, Victor, to see what is going on. His team has completely commandeered one of the labs with those two military hand refs, checking who comes in and out. I joked that maybe he found a little gray man who was doing an autopsy, and he grew very pale. Two days later, he sends me a request asking for more information on my background in material science, metallurgical engineering. Oh, we have a meeting tomorrow. I... I think I'm being invited into the lab. Station log, Dr. Judith Satin. I have never been so nervous since I defended my dissertation. Four hours talking to Victor and his team about theoretical metals, atomic bonding, even a half hour divergence into magnetism that I'm pretty sure was to throw me off the trail of what we were actually talking about. Then I got to see the lab. I, I don't know how much I should say, but the periodic table just got thrown out the window.
works here are from the earliest years of NASA. Oh, what a shame all of this was left behind to deteriorate. Victor. 
I'm sorry, Judith. I... Look, not here, okay? Somewhere off base. I'll tell you everything. But I'm not lying, okay? We're going to discover something important here. I promise. habitat viability in this area. It seems as if they knew the inevitable was on the horizon. Gear you want me to haul, I'm happy to help.
have found one of Vasco's long-lost relatives. I'm sure he'll be thrilled to find out. If you're searching them, make it quick.
Project Log, Dr. Victor Isa. We turned on the prototype today. The gravitational field around it began to fold as we long suspected. Complete reversal of gravitational pull was observed on dozens of loose objects around the lab. I'm setting up a meeting with the directors to propose a larger test. The prototype proves we don't need the original anymore. But further work is going to have to take place in space. Somewhere with abundant helium-3 and with a civilian partner. Someone with access to large-scale manufacturing resources and computational equipment. Engineering gravitational folds pulling the far side of the solar system closer to us? It's all going to be possible. Project Log, Dr. Judith Tatien. I watched the Gravjet tests from the moon today. It was the first time we were able to talk to the team at Nova Galactic directly. So many things were under wraps before, but now everyone wants all the publicity they can get. I'm already seeing proposals for manufacturing androids of drives, expeditions to Alpha Centauri and beyond. It's also overwhelming. And worrying. It could take years, decades, before we know what all these side effects of operating a grav drive can be, but no one wants to hear that right now. Like a bunch of pioneers racing towards the edges of the frontier without knowing about the grizzly bears in the mountains.
like ancient history now. Only thing we're doing these days is launching weather satellites. Guess this is as good a retirement as any. Now, Project Demeter, you want our help manufacturing scanners to better track these new meteorological patterns we're seeing. Our guess is that the poles might be naturally shifting, causing some gravitational fluctuations that are throwing off our old models. Why do you need the scanning tolerances to be so small? What are you trying to find? I just want to be sure. It's, it's not like we're doing much these days anyway. The glory days are over. Why not give ourselves a challenge before they write us off in the history books? I know what I'm seeing, Victor. The data coming back from the satellites is very clear. It's the graph drives. All those jumps from the moon. At this rate, Earth's atmosphere is going to start sputtering out into space. Can the drives be fixed? I'm working on some designs that should discreetly solve the problem. Under the guise of an emergency update to the fueling pumps. We're talking about the end of Earth. And you're trying to be subtle about it. Judith, the last thing we need is people losing faith in grab drive technology. That might be our only option. To what? Are you seriously saying we should abandon Earth? The timeline is under 50 years. A blink of an eye for a planet. But more than enough time for a human exodus. And what do we tell people? We say it's an act of God. One that science has found a solution for. Time for humanity to take its place in the stars. You know, didn't you? You lied to me. I... All this time, I dedicated my life to this discovery, Victor. And you knew we were going to kill off our planet? You haven't seen the future I've seen. There's an infinite expanse of promise out there. A meteor could have hit Earth. A plague, another world war. Colonizing other galaxies secures humanity's future for all coming generations, across all time. At the expense of our home. Stop it, both of you. All that matters is building enough ships to get everyone off this planet. And we need to start now. I'll draft up a statement. We'll need to address the entire international community. I'm sorry, Judith. There isn't a planet in this universe that will be far enough away from you, Victor. We are never speaking again after this is over. My name is Dr. Victor Isa. And if you're listening to this, then you probably already know the truth. I was young when I first headed the retrieval team of an odd gravitational anomaly on Mars. But I kept what really happened that day hidden from everyone except one other person. Even she didn't believe me at first. But I have no reason to lie to anyone now, so I... I hope you'll accept this confession, whoever you are. When I touched the anomaly, I experienced 12 days of lost time. I met myself. He told me everything that has since come true. The grav drive equations, the tests on the moon, Earth's atmosphere sputtering away because of what we had done. But he also told me about a city thriving on a planet orbiting a distant star. Human culture, art, music, lifestyles evolving and shining brightly across all of space. What price would I be willing to pay for that future? Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe Judith was right and I'm just a coward who wants to believe his mistakes were justified. But everyone has forgotten about the real origins of the grav drive. This artifact from Mars. I hope you make better use of it than I did. Oh my god! The grav drives destroyed Earth. And at the core of the first drive...
slowing you down. Settled systems was built on technology that came from an artifact that was discovered on Mars. But these early drives shook the gravity field surrounding Earth. Eventually, the atmosphere started to slowly sputter away into space. That is why Earth is uninhabitable. The artifact gave the scientists a greater understanding of time and space, but not the wisdom to see where that would lead. The settled systems wouldn't exist without the artifacts, in other words. We owe what happened here in NASA a great debt. Assuming we weren't going to lose it anyway. War, disease, famine, all the classics. Don't you see? The power of the artifact forced humanity to the stars. They didn't get to make a choice. How many would have chosen Earth? What gave Victor Isa the right to choose for them? You see the hypocrisy in what the Emissary is saying, right? They don't want to rob people of their free will, but then they steal the artifacts for themselves. In the wrong hands, the power of the artifacts can make anyone a tyrant. That is why we watch over them. The only thing you're watching out for is yourself. Don't be a fool. The Emissary and I may have our differences, but you do not want to give us a common enemy. For once, he is right. Don't do this. We can collect the final pieces together. Well, look at that. 
The emissary just became my new best friend. You've made your choice. When you're ready, the hunter and I will be at the buried temple. That's where we'll settle things. Meaning, we'll kill you. But hey, at least we'll wait. The final round doesn't start until there's only one artifact left to gather. And if I'm not mistaken, Constellation has one or two to go. Day just got a whole Recycled air. Just isn't the same as the real thing. Missed the sound of my voice, huh? Any troubles you need to share? Bring me anything useful? Glad to haul whatever you need. I'll only carry the good stuff. You need something?
hot to handle, we can take it off your hands. Yeah, what? Then here I thought you were... It's so good to have deep... Please. Have a good day. We're fully stocked. You won't find better weapon? Sure thing. Let me know if anything up here. Come back soon. Absolutely!
light as a feather at this gravity.
Whatever you need. Dropping off a few choice items.
useful. If something's on your mind, you have something for me. Inspect your ship for heat leeches every couple. you're finding everything you oh please take a look
Thanks for shopping at Jemison Mercantile. The Trade Authority has act. You won't find a better. If you need anything else, you know where to find us. You have a nice day now. It's a quaint. Okay. No loitering, okay? Yep, you... Take care. I'm sure. The real new I got contacts on. Absolutely. You need something else? I'll be here. Limited resources. We're no rely.
It's cliche, but it's be my guest. The Trade Authority appreciates your visit.
station. You speaking. What is your business here? We are a research station run by the Hadron Consortium. Our work is proprietary and confidential. Great minds advancing basic research for the future of humanity. A bunch of scientists who pool their grant funding. What? We haven't sent a distress signal? Nothing on the comms. No other ships in the system since our last supply drop. Look, what are you trying to pull here? Yes, I am sure. If there was an emergency, I'd be the one sending it. Out here. We're the only ones on this planet. If someone had sent a distress signal, we'd have picked it up. Really? The High Energy Research Lab? All right. I don't know what's going on here, but you should talk with the director. For security, I'm going to have to ask your friend to wait out there. What's inside? Stay with me and don't make any sudden moves. I'll get the door. Welcome to Nishina. I'll watch things from out here and you go do what you need to do. Just be careful. The two of us make quite the pair, eh? Take your time. Follow me. I'll show you to the director. Kaya Patel, our administrator and research director. 28 years in quantum particle physics. Or so I'm told. It's beyond me. We're a small research station in the middle of nowhere. Pirates eat places like this for lunch. It is my job to make sure that we are not on the menu. We'll take the back way up. Here, you can see our lovely storage area. Don't touch anything. So, uh... Nishina is built to go... hell was that? What? One minute you're following me, and then you're just gone. Minute later you pop in out of nowhere looking like you were in the middle of a fight. 
But there's nothing here. I should have never let you inside. What is this? Some kind of stealth tick? Who are you working for? <sighs> Look, I don't know what's going on. Let's get you to the director. Maybe she can figure this out. Finally, someone came. The distress signal. You picked up the distress signal, right? Rafael. Rafael Aguero. Chief engineer here. Well, I was. What do you mean? Wait. How did you get in here? locked in here for days. It was all I could do to keep those... those things out. You're here, but you didn't open any of the doors. So either I'm hallucinating, or... or... Hughes? Ethan Hughes? But... he's dead. No. No, no, no. This doesn't make any sense. Unless... the accident... maybe... maybe this is a side effect of the accident. If the probe is still feeding power to the distortion, then... Right. Sorry. Three months ago, I was calibrating an experiment in our high-energy research lab. There was an accident. An explosion. It caused a gas leak. Sparked a fire. I was trapped in the control room. There was nothing I could do. They're... They're all dead. The lab was built around a xenolith with a dense metallic ob... It's up here. We should... Wait. She's, she's back. All right. We're on our way up. He was out. I was just filling in the director. Let's keep moving. If anything happens, the director's office is on the second floor, end of the hall. You can't miss it.
in? Kaya Patel, Research Director. And this is our Chief Scientist, Maria Hughes. Ethan said you disappeared right in front of him. Twice now? Three times? Director, you can't be taking this seriously. Look, I don't know who you are or what you're doing here, but there has to be a rational explanation for all of this. What? You think we know? We have to start somewhere. Tell us what you've seen. Speculate. Give us something to build on. Excuse me? That is quite a claim. What makes you think that? Tell us about this other universe. Raphael? Raphael died in the accident. He... Wait. Burned out? The leak? Director, there was a hydrogen leak right after the accident. It was contained in a minute or two. But if it hadn't been, it could well have caused an explosion. Another universe, though. That's a lot to swallow. Presumed dead. The research level has been locked down since the accident. We still don't know exactly what happened. If he survived, he could have ended the lockdown. You mean this other Raphael? No. How could we possibly do that? Raphael was a colleague and a friend. If there was some way to help him, I would. But it does seem unlikely. We're not sure. Raphael was in the lab near the ventilation controls. He could have stopped it. Maybe he did. Or died trying. An artifact? You mean the source of the distortion? You know something about it? Really? That's all you're gonna say? No, no. Fair enough. You have a prior connection with them then. Maybe that's why this is only affecting you. We didn't know. That's why we were researching it. That is science, after all. So far, no one else has reported anything unusual. Either it's your prior exposure to these artifacts, or perhaps simply the fact that you're an outsider here. This facility and the research level two kilometers beneath us were built to study a gravitational distortion. This artifact and the field it creates. Three months ago, our chief engineer, Raphael, was calibrating an experimental probe when something went wrong. We still don't know what happened. There was a series of explosions and somehow it's still running. That's all we know. Whatever happened, we're completely cut off from the research level. Data feed, network, physical access, everything. That would make sense. That's why the field strength keeps increasing. We have a control unit for the probe. After the accident, I tried to use it to shut down the system, but the kill switch isn't responding. We could shut it off manually, but the entire research level is locked down. We can't even get down there. What you see here are just our living quarters. Most of this facility is deep underground. We have a particle accelerator and extensive research and development labs. Or we did. Not from up here. The explosion fried the network circuits. Without physical access to the research level, there is little we can do. We have been working in makeshift labs for months. How? I told you the research level's locked down. We can't even use the damn elevator. What? Clever. In this other universe, Raphael survived. 
he made it back from the lab. So clearly his elevator works. Take it. And you might be able to shut down the experiment. This is crazy. But first, we have to do something about your shifting. We can't shut down the probe, but we might be able to adjust some of the other parameters. It's risky. We don't know what we're dealing with, but... <sighs> All right. It's worth a try. Then it sounds like we have a plan. Come with me. The control unit is in the fabrication lab next door. What have we gotten ourselves into? you what happened you disappeared and the ceiling caved in and and i thought i'd finally lost it i'll manage look can we just go what how look if you think things are bad up here the research level is even worse i barely made it out and that was months ago. I don't understand any of this. If I hadn't seen you disappear with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it. I... Okay, okay. You're my ticket out of here. We'll do this your way. We can get out through the pantry. Here's the key. I'll back you up, I guess.
Santa! How did you... Security breach! Everybody go, out! Go. Run for it! Out of my way! to clear this out, assuming the rest of the building doesn't come down on top of us. I'm not sure. It might stop whatever's happening to you. It's a reasonable theory, I guess. They're a native species. We had an electric pulse field to keep them out. The fire took out the generators, damaged the foundation. They just keep coming. I was in the lab, working on the frequency calibration for the probe. I was walking out of the control room when it happened. I heard the tanks rupture. The alarm sound. I only had a second to react. I jumped back into the control room. The door sealed. I was safe. From the gas. The fire. Everything. But I was trapped. There was nothing I could do to stop it. If I had gone the other way, maybe I could have made it to the ventilation controls. Killed the system. Even if it killed me. I don't know. I don't want to think about it. How should I know? You're the one who keeps winking in and out of existence. I just want to get out of here. Go do whatever you're going to do. I'll see if I can clear a path to the door. It's you. You realize you just popped into my locked office. So much for security protocols. Uh, sure. Down the hall. Take the stairs next to the atrium. Yeah, let me get the doors for you. And done. Is there anything else you need? Uh, yes, Kataxi. Nasty things. The original survey team ran across them. You're welcome to read the old logs if you want. Yeah, I'll unlock the terminal for you. Bigger than you'd expect. We've got a particle accelerator, whole lab complex, the high-energy research lab. Real state-of-the-art. Can't tell you what a tenth of it actually does. That's right. Has been since the accident. We can't connect to the control system to override it. The whole system's on a head trigger. Cameras spot anyone not in the staff database. They fire off an alarm and all hell breaks loose. The Kataxi in the other universe. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. I've got an experimental thing one of the engineers put together. But... Uh, Not happening. You're starting to make a lot of sense. All right. Yeah. It's never been field tested, but all yours.
What? Did you get lost in the hallway? <sighs> <sighs> All right, this is the probe control unit. Most of these controls aren't responding. I'm going to very carefully adjust the settings I can. There's no way to tell what's about to happen. Pay attention and be ready for anything. I'll begin by adjusting the energy feed of the electron beam array. We're at 93 terravolts. Calibrating to 95, 97, 100. Ugh, nothing. Let's try the other way. 91, 89. What the? Okay, okay. It looks safe to approach. But what in the world? Distortion. Blood's pattern matches the distortion in the lab. The setting is just exposing it somehow. Hmm. Step into the distortion, please. I don't know. It's possible. That's what I want to test. If that is what's happening, what does that mean? How many of these distortions are there? all around us, all this time, and we've never noticed. <sighs> Nothing. No, hold on. There's a slight pattern change. Some kind of resonance. Right, stay there. Let me turn the feet back up for a moment. Calibrating to 90, 91, Are you all right? So the lower setting causes the distortions to manifest and the higher causes you to shift. That seems promising. Keep it on the lower setting until you want to shift and you should be able to avoid any more accidents. I'd give you my control unit, but it looks like you already have one from the other universe. Love to take a look at that when this is all over. I, uh, no. No, we still don't understand what we're dealing with here. If we found something that works, let's not press our luck. You may want to practice shifting just to make sure this works reliably. Closer to the distortion, conditions may be less stable, if that's possible. Right? If you can get down to the research level, you need to make your way to the high energy research lab. Disengage the power interlocks, then pull the emergency shutdown to stop the probe. That should finally put an end to all this. Oh, and before you go, the director wanted to speak with you. It really is just down the hall. then. All set? If you need supplies, I've asked Dr. Barakova to take care of you. It's the least I can do after everything we've put you through. Before you go, there is one other thing we should discuss. If this experiment is the cause of your shifting, when you shut it down, the shifting will stop. What happens then? To you and to us. Yes, and what of us? Nishina is a closed system, two potential states held in tension. When you shut down the experiment, that tension will resolve. You are the outside observer in the system. Whichever reality you are in, at that moment, is what will become real. For you, and your universe at least. The question is, 
Which will you choose? Of course. I don't know. I'm not sure it's possible to know. It may cease to exist. It was one possible universe, but not what actually happened. We or Raphael actually did die months ago. Or it may remain real, just not in your universe. Or in some quantum sense, perhaps you make both choices and both outcomes will be real. Welcome to quantum mechanics. Nothing will change. Nothing can change. If the universe was other than it was, you would not be here to make this choice. What you choose will be what happened in your universe, the universe that brought you to this point. Hmm. If this were a choice between my life and Raphael's, I would ask you to save him. But as the director of the station, I am responsible for the lives of my staff. 30 people. People with families, careers, futures ahead of them. In this universe. Not that I can see. Have you reached a decision? You don't have to decide now, but when the time comes, please keep them in mind. Now, it's time you are going. With the network offline, we can't shut down the security system on the research level, so you can expect some resistance. Be careful. Ethan, unlock the elevator lobby, please. Ma'am, research level is still locked down. I'm aware of that. I... All right. Done. Good luck, dear. It's been a fascinating day. Tatiana Barakova, station's doctor. This is not a public medical facility, but the director has ordered me to assist you nonetheless. I can spare a few med packs. Beyond that, I am not your therapist, your psychologist, or your cosmetologist. If there's anything else you need, ask. My journal? Have you been in my quarters? Who do you think you are? The director may have given you run of this station, but I... Wait. Wait. What is this? This entry. It's mine, but... I didn't write this. <laughs> the scorch marks. God. Yes. Yes, I do. I can spare a few more supplies. And I'll give you a break on anything else you need. Excuse me? Perhaps you'd care to try a dead-end medical post on some godforsaken planet in the middle of nowhere, huh? Six-year surgical residency. And I spend my days treating paper cuts and hurt feelings for a bunch of mathematicians and physicists. Hmm... I would have thought you were tougher than that. Hold still. Have a seat. There. Don't touch the equipment. Howdy.
lockdown is active. Emergency override controls are available on designated security terminals.
emergency override controls are available on designated security terminals.
targeted security terminals.
now has been terminated. You are? Welcome back. Ethan, how are we doing? Research levels back online. Definitely some damage, but it could be a lot worse. We will have to replace a few robots. Yes, well, that's a small price to pay, all things considered. This is a lot to take in. Artifacts, multiple universes. Look on the bright side, dear. Just imagine the papers you'll publish. If anyone even believes this. I am curious though. Why did you decide to stay here? With us? An honest answer. Perhaps you'll find the reason in time. Our next supply ship will be arriving soon. I'll have a full report ready for them. For now, I'd like to extend our gratitude and what compensation I can offer for everything we put you through. Thank you. This has been a truly remarkable experience. Sunshine? Sounds good. Lead on. What's happening, darling? I'd be happy to carry a few things for you. Want to see what I'm kept?
better not be a waste. Now we're getting. Off. Busy. to move some merch this is the need something you got the money or the goods James and Billy Reed. I hope you find what you have a good day. Bye. 